Episodes of Pellet Swap are suggested by viewers like you. If there's a character you'd like me to analyze, let me know in the comment section down below. Good morrow everyone, Silvershire here, and welcome back to Pallet Swap, where I rank the costumes and character designs of your favorite fighting games. And by your favorite fighting games, I mean my favorite fighting games, and by my favorite fighting games, I mean Soul Calibur. Today, we're looking at Pro ZD's waifu, Sung Mina. But before we begin our analysis, here's a quick refresher course on who Mina is and what we should be looking for in our character designs. Sung Mina was raised at the Sung Dojong, an armed martial arts school run by her father, Sung Han Myung. She grew up with a love of fighting and dreamed of one day defending her nation. However, as a woman, she wasn't allowed to join the military, and her fellow students refused to acknowledge her skill with a blade. Adding to these frustrations, Han Myung was pressuring her to hurry up and find a husband. After all, she was already the ripe old age of 16. She practically had one foot in the grave. One day, Han Myung's star pupil Huang left on a journey to find the magic sword, Soul Edge, and this gave Mina an idea. If she could find Soul Edge before Huang, it would prove her capability as a fighter, and hopefully earn her some independence. So she ran away from home, and set off on an adventure to find the legendary blade. Mina is unique among the Soul Edge roster in that she doesn't look like a warrior. Every other character's 1P consists of armor or some kind of martial arts uniform, whereas hers is seemingly only concerned with fashion. This makes sense given her story is all about people not taking her seriously as a fighter. Her gloves and boots feature a yin-yang, which is an important symbol in many East Asian cultures. In Korea, it eventually evolved into the... You know what, I should have googled how that's pronounced before I put it in my script. In Korea, it eventually evolved into the Taeguk seen on the nation's flag. Her palette includes every color of the rainbow and then some, and they're all highly saturated. This does a good job of portraying her youthful exuberance, but I think that seven bright colors vying for the viewer's attention is a bit much. I'd also like to see some visual similarities to Han Myung and or Huang since their stories are so interconnected with hers. Both of their outfits include the same circular crest, and it would have been neat if that was incorporated into Mina's design as well. This is a decent first outing, but it's nothing to write home about. 5 out of 10. This costume's alternate color is green and orange. It's a much more subdued palette, and as such, it doesn't communicate her personality quite as well, but it's easier on the eyes. It also draws a connection to Huang, as he too wears green and orange. 6 out of 10. Her 2P has a similar silhouette, but it's a long dress rather than a separate skirt and top. It's fancier and seems a bit more mature. I imagine this is what she might reluctantly wear to meet the gentleman suitors her dad has lined up for her. As will become a tradition for her 2Ps, it gives her a shorter hairstyle. While I personally think the braid is more unique and interesting, it's nice to have some variety. I don't think that the mismatched gloves suit an elegant design like this, though. Since it's the only bit of asymmetry on her entire outfit, it draws attention to her left arm when there's no real reason to do so. However, I do like the inclusion of a yin-yang, tying back to her 1P. Her palette is still quite colorful, but it shows more restraint than her 1P, which contributes to the more refined aesthetic. 6 out of 10. This costume's alternate color is pink and red. The yellow doesn't pop out as much as it does against blue, but that's not big enough of a deal for me to dock at any points, especially since I prefer red to blue in general. Another 6 out of 10. Her 3P is more of a summery look, not that she was very warmly dressed to begin with. She has the same yin-yang adorned boots and gloves as her 1P, albeit in a different color. Speaking of color, green, purple, and orange form a triadic color scheme, which makes them a good combination on paper, but like her 1P, they sort of clash because they're all so bright and saturated. I think it looks much better in the concept art. The bigger problem with this costume is that it plays it very safe. 3Ps are supposed to be weird and special, but this is just more Mina. 4 out of 10. Her Soul Calibur 1 1P combines aspects of rolled 1P and 2P and brings in a few new elements. Her dress is now covered in subtle patterns and has a beautiful shiny texture. I try not to take graphics into account when ranking these costumes, but it's hard to ignore just how much she benefits from the added detail. Her palette is still vibrant and energetic, but it's limited to a trio of warm colors and a few teal accents, which feels way more focused and cohesive. It's also somewhat reminiscent of Keelik, which is fitting since she trained under one of his fellow Ling Shang Tzu monks in this game. A disappointment I have with this costume, and spoiler alert all of her future costumes, is that there's no yin-yang. It was part of every one of her Soul Edge designs, so it seemed like it was going to be an important symbol for her, but then it just totally vanished. And it's a shame, because it's a long time before she develops any other recurring motifs. 8 out of 10. Her 2P has a lot in common with her 1P. It too combines aspects of her older costumes, and it too employs subtle patterns and a shiny texture for her skirt. The most major addition here is the blue scarf, which is a direct parallel to Huang's 1P from this game. Her color palette is mostly green, white, and gold, which is a trend that most of her future 2Ps will follow. 7 out of 10. Her Soul Calibur 2 1P is by far her simplest, to the point that I don't really know what to say about it. 
It's basically just their Soul Edge 1P, but with no sleeves and way less color. I don't dislike anything that's here, but it needs something more. If I wasn't so nostalgic for Soul Calibur 2, this would probably be her most forgettable design. 6 out of 10. Her 2P is closer to what I expect from Mina, bearing similarities to both of her previous 2Ps. Though the Yin Yang is still absent, the knot in front features a similar symbol. I initially thought it was a Sam Taeguk, which is a three-section variation of the Taeguk, but because of the dots, it actually more closely resembles the Tibetan Gang Yil. Either way, it's a nice little callback to Soul Edge. There's also some kind of bird emblazoned on her dress. I can't tell exactly what it's supposed to be, so I can't delve into the cultural significance, if indeed there is any. But birds in general are associated with freedom, which is what Mina desperately wants. 6 out of 10. Her 3P is a big departure from her usual look. It's a traditional Korean dress called a hanbok, which used to be common formal wear, but these days is generally reserved for special occasions like weddings. Brightly colored hanboks are associated with youth, which makes sense for Mina even though she's now 19 and has passed the torch of youngest human character to Talim. I appreciate the patterns on her dress, as the two huge blocks of color might have looked flat and uninteresting otherwise. It's usually a bad idea for fighting game designs to obscure this much of a character's body, because you need to be able to see the animations to know what's going on. But since Mina mainly fights from a distance with her pole arm, you don't need to pay attention to what her legs are doing most of the time. Unlike her Soul Edge 3P, this is very unique and feels like a worthwhile unlockable. 7 out of 10. Soul Calibur 3 was an important game for Mina because the developers finally decided how to spell her name, and to celebrate, she's back to her detailed, brightly colored self. There's a lot of folded over and layered fabric sticking out from her body, most notably on her arms and legs, which gives her a unique silhouette. She also has some armor around her waist, which looks cool but doesn't really match the rest of the design, because the only other pieces of metal are the small rings holding her shirt together. 7 out of 10. Her 2P is simpler, though not nearly as plain as her Soul Calibur 2 1P. It's unique among Mina's costumes in that she's wearing pants as opposed to a skirt or full dress. Overall, it's a pretty modern-looking outfit, resembling nothing so much as a tube top and a pair of capris, but the patterns keep it grounded in Soul Calibur's semi-historical setting. I like the addition of dark grey to her palette, as it makes the colors stand out even more. I would like some white up top to balance out the pants, though. Another 7 out of 10. Her Soul Calibur 4 1P isn't as extreme or over-the-top as most of the game's other designs, but it still takes her in a new direction. It includes several elements that were previously limited to her two-piece, such as the long sleeves, asymmetry, and of course, the green and white color palette. It makes use of a peony theme, most notably on her skirt, but also in her hair. In Korea, peonies are sometimes called the kings of flowers and are associated with wealth and nobility, making them a popular subject for artwork. Like her previous 1P, there are a few metal decorations, including a knee pad with what appears to be some Korean writing on it. I did some research to try to figure out what this means, but unfortunately I couldn't find anything. Anyway, it's an 8 out of 10. Her 2P is even more unique. She looks tougher and more aggressive than usual thanks to the inclusions of armor, a vicious curved spike on her pauldron, and a fire-breathing dragon design on her coat. Even her headband is now metallic with a gem in the center, showcasing power in addition to beauty. Since Mina is absent from Soul Calibur 5 and Soul Calibur 6 is a reboot, this game is the furthest point we've seen in her timeline, and it seems she's finally become the warrior she's always wanted to be. However, I do have to ask, what happened to her pants? Mina's outfits have never been particularly modest, but this one is so bulky and bundled up everywhere else that the exposed undies look super out of place. It genuinely seems like she's missing part of her costume. Also, I think they went a bit overboard with the belts on her torso. She looks more Final Fantasy than Soul Calibur. But still, I appreciate that the designers tried something new and weird instead of giving her yet another dress. 7 out of 10. Soul Calibur 6 goes back to basics, though it maintains the peony motif from 4. It's mostly inspired by her Soul Edge 3P of all things, now with a shawl and a shorter rectangular skirt. There's a lot of brown and grey on her palette, which doesn't seem like it should work for Mina, but the bright pink and gold totally make up for it. This costume isn't doing anything crazy or experimental, but it's solid. It pulls back to her classic looks without ignoring the development she's undergone since, and it has some beautiful details. 9 out of 10. Soul Calibur 6 doesn't have any alternate costumes, but it does have alternate colors. In Mina's case, I think they're all about equal. Her color 2, unsurprisingly, is white and green. I personally prefer the default, but it's a totally adequate alternative. Her color 3 is white and red. This is close to silver and red, so it should go without saying that I like it, but it's sort of redundant since her default is pink, which is just light red. Lastly, her color 4 is black and white with shorter red hair. I think this is meant to be a counterpart to Huang's color 4, though she doesn't have evil glowing eyes like him. It looks great, but again, why does she have so many red costumes? Who would have liked to see something in blue or orange? 9 out of 10s all around. And with that, we have ranked every single Sun Mina costume. To be honest, she's a character I've never really cared about or paid that much attention to, so making this video gave me a newfound appreciation for her designs. With a couple exceptions, I think she looks better and better in each passing game. But that's just my opinion, so what do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below if you agree or disagree with any of my rankings. 
Also, let me know which character you'd like to see next. For episode 24, we'll be discussing Lee from Tekken, as requested by RKKD. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, I bid thee farewell.